Today we're going to be looking at the TVP VTU, the tier 8 Czechoslovakian medium tank. I'm going to tell you right now, this tank is probably one of the least fun vehicles I've driven in this game in a long time. Now, I would say this thing rivals the MX 65T in terms of how bad it is as far as tier 8s go. In fact, I'm actually going through it in my head right now trying to think of a tier 8 which I think is worse than this thing and I'm really struggling. Like the Emil one, I didn't like it very much, but I would never say it's worse than this thing. Uh, the T-34 too, I thought was better than this thing. But then again, I'm one of the weird people who actually like that tank. Uh, the Oho was better than this thing. I haven't driven the uh, STA-1. As far as the English tier rates, they're all pretty decent these days. When it comes to the French, I can't think of a single vehicle there either, which I think is... Well, other than the MX-65T, which is the obvious one. Uh, when it comes to the Americans, nope, I don't see anything there that I would consider to be worse than that. When it comes to the Russians, almost certainly there's not a Russian tank that's worse than the TVP VTU, because well, Russian tanks are typically pretty solid for their tier. So, yeah, I don't see anything there either, which would I would, which I would consider to be worse. And for the Germans, no, same same story there. Yep, I honestly think. The uh, TVP VTU is in the bottom three tier eight, just tanks in general. And as soon as I'm finished making this video, I'm selling this thing so I never have to look at it again because I just do not. I, I hate this tank with a passion. And the worst thing about it as well, it doesn't even have the main feature of this line. And the main feature of this line is these three shot all loaders with the incredibly quick unload speed and the relatively quick overall reload speed. So, why this thing doesn't have an odd loader, I will never. I will never understand why this thing doesn't have an odd loader. It's just such a bizarre. It's just such a bizarre thing with this tank, and I'm glad to have finally finished this thing's grind. So, I, so I just never have to bother playing it again. And just so I can explain to you why I hate this thing so much, it's about as tall as like a Panther II. And just to give you an example of just how tall this thing is, I actually compare it to the standard B. The standard B's turret is about halfway up. It. I would actually say the standard base turret, the top of it, is below this thing's gun. And let's compare it to the charioteer. Yep, charioteer is way smaller. And WZ-111, yep, 111 is way smaller than it as well. This tank's profile is one of its biggest problems. It is huge. And also the lack of armor is a... Oh, Jesus, the lack of armor on this thing is ridiculous. Like, just to give you an example, like this thing here has 65 frontal armor only here. On the flattest plate on the tank. That's the only area where it has 65 millimeters of armor. So the armor's garbage, and the front of the turret is garbage as well. Uh, but like people say, the small term turret on the Germans is worthless. This thing has a, effectively a small term turret without the without the raw thickness. <laughs> it's such uh, I I hate this thing with the fashion. I really really do. But let's just show you the stats of this thing here. So there's four different ways you can set this thing up. The first one is setting it up with the top turret and the 105mm gun. Second way is stock turret with 105mm gun, but there's no real reason to ever do that. The next two, um, option three and four, you can set it up with the top turret with the 88mm gun, which in theory is a pretty solid option, but well, you only get six degrees of gun depression whenever you have whenever you have it set up with the top turret. Whenever you set it up with a stock turret and the moment of gun though, it actually has 8 degrees of gun depression, which I imagine would probably be the best way to go about playing this thing. Honestly, if you're looking to just reduce the awkward factor of this tank as much as possible, you probably want to run this thing with the stock turret and the idiot moment of gun. Because the main problem I have with this tank is just how awkward it feels to play. Like It's genuinely just the, the most awkward, irritating vehicle to play in the game. Well, not in the game, but... It's the most awkward vehicle I've played in a long time. Because it's tall, and it has six gun depression. That's an awful combination. And like, even though the tank is actually relatively quick, the gun, I find them, I find both guns to be really inconsistent and really irritating to use because they just can't hit the targets you're looking at the hit. And I'm going to try this one game, and then after this game I'm going to sell this thing because I, I look forward to never having to play this thing again. I really dislike this vehicle, and I've actually been playing the WZ111 14 
between this thing just in order to like cheer myself up because I'm just like I hate this thing I hate it with a passion I hate every second driving this thing and then I'll play the WZ1914 and be like yes this is awesome and then I'll go back to this thing and I'm just like oh <laughs> it's a bit of a roller coaster the last couple of days just going back and forward between oh yes this thing's awesome this thing's amazing and then going down to oh well now I'm stuck with this thing again great <laughs> so yeah um uh, the only real way I, I would ever finish this thing to grind is by playing another vehicle which I liked alongside it. Just to try and like, just remove the, just the raw, uh, well just trying to mitigate the hatred I have for this thing because it's just such a, it's just, it just feels so garbage to play. But, let's head up here towards the eastern side of the map and try and do as much damage as we can. Like I'm going to tell you right now, I think the maximum damage I've ever done this thing is 3000. And the only reason I managed that was because the half the enemy team wasn't paying attention to me and just allowed me to farm them. They ignored me for probably half the battle. And then eventually they turned around and killed me instantly. <laughs> like as soon as soon as they uh, as soon as they started paying attention to me, I just lost all of my health and died. Because, you know, that's just how it works with this tank. It's a huge target with no armor, which I don't really have to tell you, but it's a, not it's not a particularly good combination to have a giant target with no armor. I mean, just to give you an example, actually, the Lance and C has a better gun than this thing, a better gun depression than this thing. I think it has a faster rate of fire, better penetration, same alpha damage. I think the same or better accuracy with uh, with a better aiming time, and the armor is equally crap. The Lance and C literally does everything this thing can do. But better. That hadn't that that comparison genuinely hadn't struck me until there now. I always compared this thing to the VK forty five O two A, and which and that's honestly, God damn it, that that was honestly the reason why whenever I went into this thing, I went to it with low expectations, but was sort of hopeful that the tank would be fun, because I went into the VK forty five O two A back when it had six gun depression. I went into that thing with no expectations. And I actually ended up enjoying it. That was actually a vehicle that was a genuinely pleasant su surprise. I actually really had a lot. I had a lot of fun playing that tank with six degrees of gun depression. I mean, nowadays it's eight, which makes it substantially more flexible. Although I'm not sure how well it would hold up nowadays, considering back when I played it, most of the premium tanks around now didn't exist, and a lot of the tanks that are in the game now didn't exist as well. So hmm. I'm not sure how well it holds up nowadays, but. At the time when I played it, I really liked it. Let's try and go for the kill in this artillery if possible, but yeah, no idea if even if I even had line of fire to that guy. Because I have to lead the shot a pretty substantial amount. But let's try and be as aggressive as possible here, to try and get as much well, I say be as aggressive as possible, that's a terrible idea, but um let's try and be reasonably aggressive in this thing because if you go maximum aggression in this tank, you will die in seconds. Because everybody shoots you because you're easy damage. Also, I'm pretty sure you've noticed the aiming time as well. 2.4 seconds apparently, but it feels longer than that in general. Yep, and the accuracy is not particularly great on this gun. You can't hit the occasional shot, which is amazing. Like, uh, just with no expectation of it hitting, then it'll hit. But I suppose that's the same for every tank in the game, practically. Oh, and speaking of the VK4502, yeah, there is actually one in this game. And he's not looking this direction, so aim the gun. That guy drove straight in front of me just as I was about to fire there. I held my fire for, for a split second longer just because I saw that guy's silhouette coming in, coming in on the right hand side. Uh, here's the aiming time again. You can see how this thing's kind of annoying, can't you? And uh, what the hell fired from... Oh, right, right, it must have been the artillery. Also, a Scorpion G all the way up there. Jesus, that's an aggressive Scorpion. See, I only... Th the only area I can pan this guy out now is, is his turret. And... I honestly have kind of tempted to load gold. But I don't think I can really penetrate this guy's turret with any sort of consistency. Well, I can kill... I was about to say I can kill you, but apparently apparently I can't. 
and also that's another thing with this tank I completely forgot to mention overmatch zones it has them all over the place I think the, the front armor I think is relatively okay against like overmatching but when it comes to the side armor guns bigger than 120 millimeters will overmatch this thing every day of every week EBR 75 is all the way up there. Hmm. So now we're in an awkward situation where this should have been a lot less close than it is at the moment because my gun trolled the crap out of me at the worst possible moment where I was trying to kill that uh, scorpion. The EBR, I yeah, I was going to say I, I doubt he's going to come into my line of fire, but I'll keep an eye over there just in case. But he didn't, so he's dead. And the Samia, I, have a f I think he's probably just going to sit there. I don't particularly want to move very much because if he turns around, I think his reverse speed is pretty solid. So if he reverses, then he will easily be able to clip me. And uh, come on, come on, come on, aim at them. Nice. Another nearly 300 damage into that guy. And then they just have the Udez, which is down at the back of the map, which everybody's been ignoring, I've just realized. That guy's still alive. He is... He has uh, surprisingly not moved very far. Like I actually kind of, sur I'm surprised nobody killed that guy sooner than now. Where the hell in the map is he? Is he like on like a? Where is he? Is he on the ground or is he? I actually don't. I actually don't know. That's a really weird looking area that he's in. It looks like he's high up, but it also looks like he's not. Is he going like a little like... Like... Like ridge? Because like the where the scorpion is, I, I don't think he has any visual arm. Oh, it looks like people have actually found him. Oh yeah, he is up on, some, uh, on like a little lip. Ah, uh, this gun. A practically free shot of damage. I fired directly at the guy, and the gun sent the shot into space because this thing has one of the most irritating guns in the game. And the reason I didn't use the 88 millimeter is because it pretty much has the same RNG, but because you're firing more shots and misses more often, like it's uh, this tank is not fun to play. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Like I really would recommend grind through this tank on like a double XP sort of event like this one uh, like at the moment we're, we're I think it's the D-Day event that's it's called right now like I, I believe that's what they called it um, I, yeah D-Day D -Day anniversary special like grinding this tank on, on an event like this is the best thing to do just try and get through it as quickly as humanly possible because otherwise it's going to take you forever like I unlocked this thing probably two and a half three and a half years ago and I actually bizarrely liked the T-34-100. It was a tank which I actually genuinely enjoyed playing. And hell, I actually managed a 62% win rate in that thing. I genuinely liked that tank. But the VTU that came after it... You can see how much free XP I used on this thing, by the way. Trying to get, trying to make the grind as easy as, po as easy as possible. For years, I devoted all the free XP that I had on my account to effectively free XP in the entire grind for this tank. It was all farmed free XP as well. It, none of it was converted yet to free XP. I just farmed free XP just over time and just gradually used it to finish off this thing's stock round for me. So I never played this thing stock. And if it's if it's so lackluster whenever it's fully upgraded, I can't imagine playing this thing stock. I'm just gonna be <laughs> just gonna be hundred percent honest with you on that. I cannot imagine playing this thing stock. Weirdly, I love the T thirty four one hundred. I thought this thing was a lot of fun. But the TVP VTU, even though it's in theory a similar sort of playstyle, it just didn't it just didn't work. <laughs> like the T thirty four one hundred hundred millimeter gun genuinely felt solid, but but the the same gun or well I said the same gun the eighty eight millimeter on the on the um, what you call it on the on the TVP VTU just didn't do the same thing. Like I mean, this thing here is base accuracy with the hundred millimeter is sitting at 0.3 at two point four second aiming time. 
it's only a little bit worse than the gun on the, than the E8 millimeter gun on the on the fully upgraded TVP VTU. I mean, actually, I still own the gun. I can just switch down here and show you. Let's see, so this thing is 0 0.37, so literally it's 0 0.01 difference in the actual like accuracy of the gun. Yes, the rear fire goes up significantly, but the nice thing about the Constrictor's gun at the time when I played it was it was the highest alpha damage I think you could get on uh, on a tier seven medium. It was the highest. It was the highest alpha damage you could get, and it was damn sweet to play because of that. But this thing here, two forty alpha damage, that is that is actually standard for tier eight. That's like middle of the road for tier eight. So you can't want to use the three twenty alpha damage gun, but that comes with even more accuracy than you had with the 100mm the previous tier. I mean, I think it's point f yeah, point 0.4. <laughs> Similar sort of aiming time, but the gun's nowhere near as consistent, nowhere near as, ni nowhere near as nice to use. And if you miss a shot, there's a lot more punishing in this thing as it, as well, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to sell this thing here now. Um, I just wanted to make like a video just talking about this thing, because it is a tank I absolutely detested, and I just kind of wanted to get it off my chest, and I'm just realizing, why am I selling those? No real point in me doing that. And, yep, yeah, uh, let's just say, like, I think it was a good idea for Wargaming to make the alternative version of this thing here a tier 6, because I actually genuinely feel this thing here should have been a tier 6. I mean, yeah, there it is there. Okay, so, if you don't know, there's a tier. S oh right, I'll resolve that later. Um, so if you don't know, there's a tier six. Actually, you know what? I have it in the garage. I think. Um, let's see. I think I still own that. It's been a while since I played it. Like, wait, do I not own it? Oh no, I do. no, I do. I do. Yeah, this thing here, the score T40, is effectively the same tank. Two tiers lower. And that's not an exaggeration to say that either. It is the same tank. Just the tracks are a little bit higher on the tier 8. Armor, stats, all exactly the same except the health. Yeah, I don't know why they made this thing a tier 8. I feel like it would have made a lot more sense as like tier 6. But yeah, for some reason they decided this thing here should be a tier 8. I'm not entirely sure why. It's a kind of a, of a bizarre situation, honestly. So, yeah. Um... The, the, weirdly, I remember this thing here actually being fun, but this thing here, I absolutely hate it. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm rambling on now. So, long story short, I would say be prepared for this tank if you're ever going to drive it. Go in with the knowledge that it's a terrible tank. Unless they rebalance it at some point in the future, go in with the knowledge it's a terrible tank. And maybe it'll surprise you. Like, maybe if you go in with low enough expectations. I thought I went in with minimum expectations, but even I was underwhelmed by it. So, yeah. And I went into it fully upgraded because I used all my free XP on it. And it still underwhelmed me. So, yeah.